Today I'm going to try and repair this frequency counter that I acquired earlier. It works great on, on band 1, which is uh, up to 100 MHz, and it works great from 1 GHz to 18 GHz. But band 2, which is 10 MHz to 1 GHz, uh, doesn't work. And um, I'm going to take a look at that today. So just to uh, show what's happening here, my signal generator is set at 44 MHz, and I apply it to band 1, and my frequency counter says... Um, 33.999989 megahertz so I'm, I'm really chuffed with that uh, but what I'm not so happy about is band 2 if we move this down to band 2 and select band 2 nothing absolutely nothing it just says zero so we're gonna take a look at that today so if we open it up first um, There we go. Should probably switch it off while doing this, but okay, here we go. If we take a look at the block diagram, we see that there's a PCB A09 called Band 2 Converter. And um, if we take a look at it, it's actually both the input for Band 1 and Band 2. Uh, band 1 is 10 MHz, no, sorry, 10 Hz to 100 MHz, and uh, it has a 1 mega ohm input impedance. But if we follow the signal through here, it goes through a preamp, goes into a band selector, and it comes out here to the actual counter board, which is a separate board over here. Now, we know this is working. We also know that the test selection, this 200 megahertz counter, is working because uh, during power up, and when you do a test of the frequency counter, uh, we get a 200 megahertz signal going through here. So we know this path is working, we know this path is working. We also know that band select 2 is not working. And basically what's happening on band select 2 is that the signal comes in here. This is a 50 ohm uh, input impedance. And basically the signal is mixed with a frequency, uh, with a clock that comes up from here. The clock is from 370 to 500 megahertz and is multiplied by 2. And this is mixed here and the result of the mixer is a low pass filtered, um, goes through some um, lock detection and uh, we have a signal back to the main controller that uh, the thing is locked uh, but anyway the signal uh, the mix signal goes through here it's getting buffered after the low pass filter and is uh, sent through the band select filter and out to the actual counter module um, so we know uh, that somewhere either this is failing this is failing um, the low pass filter and the buffer may be failing and um, there may be no clock coming in from uh, outside here. My guess is that the isolation amplifier is fried because someone has uh, put in a too high a level. So this is the actual uh, counter internally. And this board at the back here is the band 2 converter. Uh, as you can see it's really difficult to uh, get a probe, oscilloscope probe down there. During this exercise I will uh, solder a couple of wires and put the clips on that pull out the board, solder the wires, put the board back again and uh, so forth until we get some idea about what's happening so yeah, let's get started first I plug out the power remove the little ground clip here this takes a pair of pliers Whoop. and pull the board out so here we have the circuit diagram this is actually from a slightly later model than the than the model counter I have here but I discovered that these two models are basically identical with the exception of the CPU board on the on the later version there's more ROM and RAM but uh, analog input wise they're, they're really the same um, what we see here is the input the signal input from uh, band 2 it goes through a couple of capacitors and a 50 ohm resistor to ground um, this resistor is one quarter watt uh, it's possible that this one has blown Anyway, the signal goes through some capacitor, some DC block. It goes through a common base uh, amplifier, buffer kind of thing. And then it goes to the signal mixer. And um, the other input to the mixer comes from down, blah, 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 all the way down here. And then it goes through a 200 megahertz low pass filter. Since I have to unplug the PCB, uh, plug it in again, unplug, plug in because I can't probe it. I will solder a wire here to see that there's a signal on the input. Then I will solder a wire on the output of the transistor and um, maybe on the other on the input to the mixer, the other input to the mixer, 
and the output of the low pass filter. So at least um, we can uh, we can uh, verify the input stage. And if I'm right, the input buffer here has has uh, blown. So first, I will solder some wires. Yeah, so I'm back and uh, I finished soldering, and uh, now I can probe uh, the input. Um, the signal from the front goes to uh, this pin here, yes, and there's a gorgeous sine wave. Uh, it's a little bit noisy, but my oscilloscope probe is not too too good. So we have the input signal uh, from my signal generator. It's actually reaching the board. If we continue here, uh, this is the signal after the isolation amplifier. And um, we see 34 kilohertz here as well. And we have another signal here, which is uh, the other input to the mixer, which is a terrible me, uh, terrible signal. Yeah, so back to the circuit diagram. The next step will then be to check the input, the other input uh, to the mixer coming from down here. If you study the circuit diagram a little bit, you'll see that there's a signal from a local oscillator coming in here. It then gets buffered by this uh, transistor and uh, the signal goes back out again and it also goes down here to another uh, mixer and finally the signal comes in and goes to a buffer and all the way out here to uh, divide by two counter so I will now measure the input here to check whether we have any signal from the local oscillator and then the output here here and and uh, through this buffer here to the signal uh, that goes into the divide by two circuit. Okay, and I'm back and I have now uh, soldered the wires, my probe wires. I've soldered them to the input from the local oscillator. The first thing I probe is the input from the oscillator circuit. And uh, yeah, there's absolutely nothing. Oh, there's something there. Yes, this is 400 megahertz. Which sounds right, uh, I remember from the block diagram should be around 370 to 800, so 400 megahertz sounds about right. So yeah, that's cool, the signal is coming in, and then it goes through a buffer and out again. So let's see whether it goes out again, see whether the buffer has any problem. And the output from the buffer is this one. And, yeah. It's a little bit noisy, but uh, that's probably because of my probe. But the signal is there. There is a 400. There's a 400 uh, megahertz signal there. So it goes through the buffer and out again, which is correct. And I soldered one more pin uh, because the signal here is getting buffered one more time, and goes to a divide by two counter, um, just to make sure that that buffer is working as well. So let's take a look at that and see what we can see there. We have a 400 megahertz signal here, it's buffered very well, very nicely, and then the signal here. So all the buffer seems to be working. So we haven't found the problem yet. Basically what I've marked out with yellow is this is the, uh, the input from the signal generator. It's being buffered, it goes to the mixer, and after that there's no signal. Um, the next thing is we have the signal from the local oscillator. It's coming in, it's coming in here goes through this buffer and goes back out again and I've measured the signal on the input and on the output. Furthermore, the signal continues to another buffer which goes to a band 4 output and also it goes through here all the way to a divide by 2 counter. And uh, we know that these buffers are working and we know the input buffer is working. So I'll just work my way forward. I know the signal is here. Now I'll measure it on the input to this mixer and I will measure the output from the divide by two counter. Okay, and I'm back again. And what we are measuring now is uh, the next step. We already know that the local oscillator signal reaches this PCB and gets buffered. Uh, so the next thing we're going to check is the divide by two um, chip. And if we look at the buffered signal, the buffered local oscillator signal, uh, we have a 400 megahertz signal on the input to this chip. And uh, let's take a look at the output. 
and what we see here is rubbish. So it looks like the divide by two chip is not working. Uh, so unfortunately, this chip is a, a Motorola MC1690 or 11C06 as an alternate part. And uh, really, I don't know where to get this chip. Yeah, and actually, I was just removing the wires and trying to move them to somewhere else. Um, but I've discovered a cold solder near one of the transistors. And uh, I'm just going to clean it up. And uh, let's see whether that would solve the problem. So, um, first, I should just remove the wires. And that's complete. Quick to do. Okay, the camera And let's just clean up. This is a RF, so I'm trying not to use too much flux, or at least if I do, it, clean it up afterwards. And uh, yeah, this is the mixer input, and the solder joint looks really, really bad. Um, I guess I have to use some flux anyway. When it dries up and gets really grey. Uh, and yeah, and let's see how that works. So let's put the the board back. And they're very clever. They wrote J1, J2, J3 on the wire itself, so it's really easy to see where everything goes. And we're going to J4, and this is J5, here. One, go, and this is what's in here. Okay, and then plug the board back down. Yeah, it's nice. There we go. And then we'll back out. Um, let's switch it on again. Uh, let's see, band 2. Yeah, we should wait for it to warm up. It's complaining a little bit. Band 2, there we go, 20 megahertz. It works. 30 megahertz is no problem. Um, really excellent. Uh, let's go to 900 megahertz. The other end of this. Okay, my. My uh, signal generator is uh, the PLO in my signal generator is not locking for some reason, but we are close to 900 megahertz and it's showing here. So really, really nice. Yeah, it just works. Band two is now working, so I fixed it, and I'm really happy about that. Band one. What do we have here? Yes, beautiful, and. Uh, and finally, if we just try band 3, it says 1 gigahertz to 18 gigahertz. Um, my signal generator cannot generate uh, 1 gigahertz. But maybe, maybe if we are lucky, we can try 960 megahertz and see whether this thing... Yep, yeah, 960. So band 3 is working fine. My uh, frequency counter has been uh, repaired. So yeah, that's the way to do it. Uh, just do it step by step, follow the signal through the, through the circuit and eventually uh, you will find the problem. And thanks for watching.